welcome to Cadella. In this episode, I will be talking to you about another incredible woman who did incredible things for the STEM field in a series I like to call Make Them Mainstream. For those of you who don't know, STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And there is quite a low number of females who are a part of these fields. However, there has still been a lot of women who have done incredible things for the STEM fields and they should be household names, but unfortunately, we aren't even learning about them in school. So I wanna make these women mainstream. I get most of my information and inspiration from this book called Women in Science, the Fearless Pioneers Who Changed the World. The link to this book will be in the description so you can check out the author and even more awesome things that she has written. Today we are going to be talking about Elizabeth Blackwell. She was born in England but moved to the United States with her family. She became the first female to have a medical degree. She trained nurses for the Civil War. She was a published author. She was a professor. She established the National Health Society in London, founded the New York Infirmary for Women and Children, and she also founded the London School of Medicine for Women. She also became the first woman listed in the British Medical Register. Elizabeth first got her interest in the medical field because unfortunately, one of her close friends died from what was probably uterine cancer. She couldn't help think how her friend might have survived if she was treated by a female, by someone who appreciated the female anatomy, by someone who appreciated treating females. So she started reading medical books and shadowing her doctor friends, and she eventually got accepted into medical school. Now, she might have got accepted because her classmates said yes as to play a joke on her, but she showed up to class anyway and schooled them. Now, all of the women we talk about in this segment are passionate, and Blackwell is no exception. When her professors tried to kick her out during anatomy lessons, she argued her way into staying there. If she was going to be a doctor, she would have to know the female and the male form. During Elizabeth's time, hygiene wasn't at its best. And when she was caring for a baby who had gonorrhea, her eye ended up getting infected and she lost sight in that eye. And did this stop her? No. This led her passion even more into developing hygienic ways that we see in hospitals today, like doctors wearing gloves or doctors washing their hands after every procedure. She realized that treating patients was one thing, but preventing having to treat patients was another. She advocated that prevention is better than cure, which is why she was so important in the hygiene movement, and she even established the Sanitary Commission with the help of President Abraham Lincoln. Not only was she an awesome medical doctor, but she also supported women's rights, and everything that she did in the medical community was to help women. Not only was she helping women, she was helping other people who were facing social injustice, like the poor, and she fought for this social injustice through her medicine. And Elizabeth was a very important trailblazer for females in the medical field. Now we see a lot of female doctors, and that is amazing. So thanks Elizabeth for helping those women find their passion in medicine. I hope you all enjoyed this brief history lesson, and in no way does this encompass everything that Elizabeth Blackwell did, so I encourage you to research more about her. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can get Elizabeth's name out there. All these women in this segment should be a household name, and it's unfortunate that we don't even learn about them in school. Also, if you love this content, then please subscribe to my channel. And as always, my beautiful friends, stay wild, moonchild, and make them mainstream.